Hello everyone and a very good afternoon to everyone joining in from India. This is Vishwata from the marketing team. I'll be introducing the host for the day. Uh, we have Abdullah Khalid, who's a growth officer at CEO's office at Bizom. Uh, Abdullah Khalid has drawn a plethora of hats in his years in the industry. Abdullah is a growth officer and one of the youngest leaders at Bizom, driving continuous success for multiple initiatives such as ONDC. Over to you, Abdullah. Thank you so much, Vishruta, for the warm introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Vishruta mentioned, my name is Abdullah Khalid, and I'll be your host for today. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, everyone, for joining this webinar. Uh, we hope to have some really great conversations in the next one hour. Let me just quickly set the agenda for you for the webinar. So in the first 25, 30 minutes, we'll be having some discussions with our panelists. We have some questions for them, so they'll be answering it. And in the next uh, 20, 25 minutes, we'll be taking questions from your end so that our panelists can have a conversation around it. Before going into the webinar, before going into the topic, let me just quickly introduce our panelists for today. So we have, first we have Manila with us. Manila has overall 12 years of experience in successfully growing and managing large, large businesses, as well as launching and scaling new businesses. Currently, she's working as a category leader for B2B and home B2C domain at ONDC. Prior to ONDC, Manila worked for Udan for almost five years, where she looked in launching and scaling categories like fashion and general merchandise. Prior to Udan, uh, she spent almost two years on her startup and also worked for PepsiCo for 1.5 years. It's really great to have you, Manila, with us. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, we also have Badrinath Mishra with us. Uh, so. Oh, he has over 14 years of experience in offline and online consumer retail space. Badrinath Mishra envisions democratizing e-commerce via ODC. And he has led both demand and supply across a diverse portfolio of FMCG, electronics, home, fashion, and lifestyle. He has also been a chief contributor, incubator, and a growth driver in other organizations like Vestige, Stampdeal, and Fab India. It's an honor to have you with us, Badri. We also have Deepak Damle. He is the head of e-commerce and uh, corporate strategy at Fackelman India. Deepak is an accomplished professional with over 10 plus years of experience in driving growth and devising transformative strategies. An expert in strengthening companies to lead in highly competitive situations with the right corporate strategies and operational planning. With a successful tenure at Nestle, he played a pivotal role as a digital and e-commerce manager driving significant growth and generating results through innovative strategies and partnerships in India and Europe. And also we have Akshay Fodidar with us. Akshay is a growth officer at Bizon and uh, he focuses on strategy and execution across markets with over six years of experience in growth, sales and marketing across industries. Akshay is currently responsible for taking Bizon's ONDC seller application to the market. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining this call. We hope to have some great conversations with you. So now moving on to the topic, as we all know that there is a lot of buzz around ONDC these days. And that buzz is justified also because what we are about to witness in the coming months or years is a revolution in the e-commerce space. And we'll be talking about that only in this webinar, how that revolution will be happening, what's going in the background, what's going in the foreground. So we'll be having the conversations around it. So to start with, I would like to quote Shri Piyush Goyal, Honorable Union Minister, what he had to say around ONDC. So he said, and I quote, that uh, ONDC will democratize digital commerce and move it from a platform-centric model to an open network model. Now, when we say an open network model, what do we really mean, up, mean by it? So we'll be having conversations around it in this webinar. So to start with, I have a question for Badri. So, but the e-commerce has really picked up in India post-COVID and in a big way, of course. E-commerce platform operators, brands, and sellers are increasingly focusing on winning the digital customers, digital shoppers. So, could you help us understand what is ONDC solving for currently and why it really matters in the today's e-commerce landscape? Yeah, over to you. Sure. Hi, and thank you, Abdullah. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm super excited to see more than 170 participants on the discussion. Hey, greetings from ONDC and thank you for having me here. I believe this session is going to provide enough clarity 
for all of you to take uh, relevant steps forward uh, so that we tap onto this opportunity for your business. Uh, coming to Abdullah's question, we all know e-commerce is the way forward to achieve scale, right? For business and customers both. You know, businesses join e-commerce to discover potential market and large number of customers beyond their physical presence. Similarly, if you see customers, they find larger assortment and convenience to shop online. What is happening in India, if you see, with two decades of e-commerce evolution in India, we can only see around 6% of total commerce in this country is coming from online retail or online shopping. And just around 1% uh, from B2B. And both these indices are way lower than the global figures. We are like a large country with very high penetration of smartphones and internet. Still, we are at a very, very low number. If you see the supply side of it, it is even more abysmal. Only around 0.2% of sellers are online. 99.8% of sellers, they have not tested e-commerce yet in the country. When you talk about geography, it is very, very highly concentrated around large cities or metros. India being a country with, as I said, very high penetration of internet and smartphones, demand doesn't seem like an issue. Then what is happening? Let's see what is stopping our sellers to participate in the e-commerce revolution. There are, there are distinctly four, uh, uh, there are distinctly, Abdullah, if I can request you to go to the next slide. Yeah, there are, so in our point of view and research says there are distinctly four large bottlenecks which is stopping the, the sellers to join online. And here I'm talking about uh, MSME, largely that's backbone of the country. You know, any business which is a startup, any business which is less than 250 crore uh, top line in a year. So what is happening with them? A, there are very limited choices for to sell products and services online. What can you do? You can create your own website or an application or you go to a marketplace and sell. And in every sector, to our surprise, made be online food ordering, grocery, taxi hailing, household services, or general merchandise. We often struggle to find a third player. It's either one or two players, right? Now we have a very, very limited choice how to and where to sell our products and services. B, the terms and conditions of the business are not in favor of the sellers. The marketplaces normally control those terms and conditions. And seller is left with only one choice to agree, right? C, limited discoverability, which means in order to show your catalog to the buyers on a different application or a platform, you have to register on that platform. So every time you choose a market test for a platform, you have to do a registration and you are limited again to the buyers bought by that platform. So your discoverability is highly limited to the platform you are on board. The fourth, which or D, which is very important is the economies of the business. Nobody stops you to create the entire value chain of demand, supply and order fulfillment. But is it viable? Is it viable to keep pumping money and to bring customers? Is it viable to manage your entire business? And is it viable to do that final leg of order fulfillment, return management and everything? Now to enable sellers of all kind, if I request Abdullah to move forward. And uh, this is a quick snapshot in front of you where, you know, 30% of our country's GDP is contributed by MSME, which we are talking about nine, more than 90 million MSMEs. But whereas they use, um, you know, uh, internet uh, up to 80% with respect to connectivity and communication, digital payment has gone to a level of one quarter of their transaction. They are discoverable somewhere, uh, not sure about this number, but somewhere largely on different digital platforms. But their activity rate is very, very low, extremely low. Now to enable sellers of all kind in India and to help them overcome these challenges, ONDC, which is Open Network for Digital Commerce, came into existence, where all the sellers have a level playing field and can have a control on their terms of trade. As the discussion will progress, we'll understand ONDC in a deeper context. Thank you.
Great. Uh, thanks, Badri, for your answer. And while you were just talking about that currently more than 95% of the business is happening off off offline. So it reminded me of an incident. So Akshay will relate to it. So Akshay, when Akshay and I, we, we started working together on ONDC. And uh, so we were thinking of shooting an emailer to all our brands that to onboard on ONDC. So we were thinking what subject line we can keep. So Akshay came up with an idea. Let's just keep a subject line that the future of e-commerce is offline. And it kind of related with the audience and we got a good response to it because yes, the business currently like more than 95% is offline only. And the aim of ONDC is to bring that online. So yeah. Uh, next, uh, I would like to understand from Manila, uh, like Badri talked about like how ONDC is operating and like what change we are trying to bring here. I uh, would like to understand from you that what's the operating model behind it? What are the things happening in the background? What's the actual operating model behind OITC? If you can highlight that. Sure. Thanks, Abdullah. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Manila and happy to be part of this discussion. So, uh, so to answering Abdullah's question, what is the operating model for ONDC, right? So ONDC basically is working on uh, two principles. One is unbundling and second is interoperability. Uh, when I say unbundling, so basically, if you look at the current e-commerce transaction, as my colleague highlighted, Badri, right, that uh, current e-commerce transaction that is happening in the ecosystem right now, all these transactions are closed network transactions. When I say closed network transaction, by this I mean that any entity that is trying to set up an e-commerce function, that entity is responsible for building the supply side also, buy side also, and the third logistic side also. Since that, uh, since any e-commerce entity is responsible for all the three functions, currently responsible, it's responsible for all the three functions. So overall cost of setting up an e-commerce function itself is, for an entity is quite high. So that's why when DC has been conceptualized to solve that problem, where one is we are working on unbundling. So by unbundling, we mean, we mean that if there are three important functions that are part of any e-commerce transaction in form of seller, buyer, and logistics, then all the three functions can be unbundled. Just look, this, uh, this is very similar to the way Maruti Suzuki Gar gets manufactured today, right? Where uh, Maruti uh, doesn't manufacture all the spare parts in house. They get the speakers manufactured from Bose or maybe Herman and maybe the tires from Apollo. So that's what unbundling is all about, where we are disintegrating, basically unbundling the three functions that are part of e-commerce. Now let's talk about the, another principle, which is interoperability. Now by interoperability, what we mean is since in unbundling, we talked about the three functions, supply, demand, and logistics can be three different companies. So interoperability basically talks about how these three different entities can talk to each other. So Abdullah, if you can just go to the next slide. So basically uh, just look, uh, so this unbundling plus interoperability concept is very similar to the SMTP protocol, which we use in day-to-day -day life, right? Where if I'm a Gmail user, I can instantly transfer an email to a Yahoo user or maybe to Abdullah who might be a Bizom user, right? And this is possible only when uh, the SMTP protocol exists. So uh, if I have to define a protocol in simpler terms or in a layman terms, a protocol is basically a common language through which the two different applications are talking to each other. And that's exactly what, what ONDC is. Basically, ONDC is an open protocol. That's a com common language with the help of which the different buyer applications, different seller applications, and different logistics applications, they will talk to each other. And all these applications are integrated with the ONDC through an API. So this is how, uh, you know, Abdullah, uh, any entity will go about uh, integration on ONDC network. And this is how the entire uh, operating model, I'll say, of ONDC is different. So first of all, ONDC is a protocol. Protocol in a layman terms, it's a common language which will help in, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, interaction of the different apps. And, uh, uh, and overall, ONDC has been uh, defined on two principles. One is unbundling and second is interoperability, which will help in unbundling the entire uh, value chain of e-commerce, where we are saying that any entity that is good at something. For example, if I am a manufacturer, if I am good at manufacturing products, or maybe as I gave you an example of Maruti Suzuki, where Apollo is good at manufacturing tires. So it will focus on something which is 
uh, which it is really good at. It is it will focus on strengths. Whereas, my, uh, you know, uh, obviously, if tomorrow uh, Apollo wants to build a uh, get into the car manufacturing or let's say any seller that uh, is trying to get into an e-commerce system to take a current example of Paytm, where Paytm is a digital wallet company, right? Now, Paytm has a great user base where a lot of end users like us are actually opening the app multiple times in a day to make a digital wallet transaction. So they are great at building the end users, bringing the end users. So now uh, uh, in ONDC concept, what we are saying is for Paytm to enable e-commerce, they will largely focus on their strengths, which is built, uh, bringing the buyer up. What they can do is uh, instead of worrying about building the entire supply from scratch, building the entire team that will handle the supply, and similarly, building the entire logistics from scratch, what they can do is they can just integrate with ONDC and leverage on the strengths of the other applications and enable the e-commerce in this way. So as it is displayed on the screen, as I was mentioning, the unbundling basically involves uh, disintegrating the uh, all the three functions, important functions that are involved in any e-commerce transaction in form of buyer application, seller application, and logistic application. And interoperability basically allows all the three different applications to talk to each other. Great, uh, thanks Manila. So I see there are a lot of brands joining in in this webinar. There are a lot of sellers joining in this webinar. So just for you, would like to highlight here, once you are on the network, once you are present on the open protocol, which means your products are listed across all the buyer applications, which are there on ONDC network. So you'll be getting orders from all the buyer application, no matter where your buyer is present. And that's the main highlight of ONDC, I would say. So yeah, yeah. thanks Manila for that. Yeah, so I think adding on to Abdullah's point, just consider ONDC protocol as a connector. The moment you connect to ONDC protocol uh, in form of a seller, you go live on multiple buyer apps versus let's say the current scenario where any seller application or any seller needs to register separately. So I think on the screen, you can see the overall ecosystem of ONDC where we have around 32 seller applications that are live with us. There are around 39,000 sellers who are either live directly, they are integrated directly on ONDC protocol or they are live through a seller application. And there are around 45 lakh SQs that are live with the ONDC protocol on the selection side. If I talk about the buyer side, there are around 10 buyer applications that are working with us with the potential of around 100 million potential buyer base. So here, as Abdullah was mentioning, the moment you get integrated uh, on ONDC protocol as a seller, let's say, as you can see, there are different seller like Bizom, seller app. The moment you integrate on ONDC as a seller, you will go live on all the 10 different buyer applications that you're seeing on screen without doing any multiple registration. You just need to do one-time registry. Thank you. Great. Yeah, thanks Manila. Uh, one thing for the audience, I can see there are a lot of questions already popping up in the chat box. So I would just like to request you, like, just wait for 10 minutes and we'll have a proper Q&A session. So we'll have questions from everyone. It's an open network. We'll have questions from everyone. Okay, so yeah, uh, moving on to the next part. So Badri, uh, let's just boil down to the very basic. Let's just dive into the very basic. Can you help us understand a buyer journey? I am a buyer. Can you help us understand my journey? on the network, how it will happen? Oh, it's a very important question. And for all the businesses, customer push to dhanda chalega, right? So um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example, but before that, I will I must tell you that exactly like internet, when ONDC has become an open protocol, innovation is possible and immense innovation is possible. What happened on internet? We know that starting from information exchange to businesses, to individual entrepreneurs coming as bloggers and so many things to AI, the level of artificial intelligence and whatnot, because it's open and it's free. Exactly. ONDC is an open protocol and it's free now. Right? Any business can discover ONDC and discover potential through ONDC to reach the market. And any buyer through potential, um, through different buyer application can reach to the uh, catalog. So <clears throat> let me take you through a typical journey of a customer. 
And then I'll also tell you different possibilities or combinations that can happen. And Vijay is a fictitious character here. So no offense for Vijay. We all always love Vijay. So Vijay, what he does, he's a customer and uh, trying to buy Atta. What is happening? He has an application, which is ONDC compliant buyer application. So what Vijay does, goes to the application. It can be Paytm or PIN code today, tomorrow it can be WhatsApp or any application who has Vijay as a customer. So goes to the application, puts a, hits the search button, looks for Ata, and Vijay gets two options on the screen. One is Gupta Kirana store, which is nearby Vijay's home. And Gupta Kirana store says that particular packet of Ata at rupees 50 and doesn't provide delivery. Now Vijay has a second option, which is from Big Basket. And here Gupta Kirana store and Big Basket both have sellers on the network. So, and they both sell at Gupta Kirana store has rupees 50 without delivery. Big Basket is selling the same Atta through another hypermarket, which is modern Kirana store near Vijay to business house at 150 rupees. Naturally, Vijay will go and put order to Gupta Kirana store. And Vijay well knows that if I select a product, the next step is I can even go for purchasing a delivery and that's possible on an open network like ONDC. So Vijay selects Gupta Kirana stores, adds a packet of Aata, which is rupees, which is of rupees 50 without delivery. Now Vijay searches for delivery services. What happens? ONDC has two interesting or very relevant uh, entities called registry and gateway. The registry is the entity where every seller identity is stored. And Gateway is an entity, and these both are technology entities. Gateway is an entity which receives search intents from the buyer application and broadcasts it to the seller application to look for a catalog. Okay. Now, Vijay searches for delivery services. Gateway and the registry on ONDC network or protocol come into picture. They give two options to Vijay. One is Dunzo which will deliver from the Kirana store at rupees 50 again. And load share, which is another delivery service provider, will deliver at rupees 70, which is a smart chap. He adds Dunzo service, which is rupees 50 to the cart. Now, Vijay goes for payment. Exactly like how it happens on normal marketplace or online shopping, there are so many payment options that are available. Vijay has ATA of rupees 50, delivery service of rupees 50, goes and pays through UPI payments and checks out. Now the ATA is getting delivered at Vijay's house at rupees 100, where Vijay would have bought it at higher price at the first place from Big Basket. You know, this is one option. The other options, Abdullah, I would say, are many or can be many. Like, for example, Gupta Kirana store being a seller and as it is an open network, can always provide a self-delivery to Vijay's house. It can always list, hey, Atta is not 50 rupees, but 55 rupees, and I can deliver to your house. Gupta Kirana store can also have an option of self-pickup. Vijay can actually purchase it and goes and picks it up from Gupta Kirana store as, is, uh, as per his convenience. Now, it can also happen that Gupta Kirana store might have a list of different logistic service provider for Vijay to choose. So for a business, what I'm trying to say is immense opportunity based on your core strength and the options that you can bring onto the network. Yeah. Great. Uh, thanks, Badri. So now that we have a better understanding of the complete network concept. So Manila, could you help us understand like why seller apps and the buyer apps would be interested in working with OMDs? Okay. What's in it for them? Yeah, sure. So um, I think if I start with the seller applications, right? So uh, anybody who is a small Kirana store or anybody who is into manufacturing of any of the product, right? So the first biggest advantage that uh, any seller 
will get or any seller application will get by joining ONDC network is definitely one is access to the larger buyer base. As I mentioned before, right, here since ONDC in ONDC protocol, you need to make one-time registry, right? So you mo the moment you get connected to ONDC protocol through API or through one of the seller app, which has already built connectors, right? You will go live on all the different buyer apps that are there on the buyer side. So definitely here, unlike I'll say the current ecosystem where let's say if I register as a seller on platform X, I I'm only visible or my selection is only visible to the buyers that are coming on platform X. But here in ONDC uh, versus a current ecosystem, obviously the moment I register with the ONDC on the supply side, I will go live on the different buyer app, buyer app A, B, C, D in ONDC context current. As I showed you, there are around 10 buyer applications that are ONDC compliant buyer application by the name of PIN code, Paytm, et cetera. So one is Definitely, as a seller, you will get a chance to showcase your selection to the entire buyer universe. That's one. Now, coming on to the second uh, biggest benefit is, again, here, you don't need to make a separate registration. You don't need to register separately. You don't need to manage the account separately the way uh, all the existing sellers or brands are managing in the current ecosystem, where they need to deploy a different account manager for the different platforms that are there in the market, right? So here uh, in ONDC, you need to make only one time single registration and you will go live on the network. Third, the third since obviously the overall concept with which the ONDC or the objective with which ONDC was conceptualized where we want to give more and more number of options to the seller. So here once more, since there are multiple seller apps through which you can, any seller can go live on the network. So here, instead of going by and following the rules that are set by the platform in terms of commissions, in terms of any kind of ads and marketing fee cost, or in terms of any kind of event participation here as a seller, you can actually go ahead and negotiate your terms and condition with the different seller applications that are ONDC compliant. And like whichever seller application you are okay with in terms of their terms and condition, in terms of commission, in terms of any kind of monetization fee they are charging, you can go ahead and go live through that particular seller application. So that's the third biggest advantage where you can set your terms and condition uh, in terms of commission, et cetera, to go live on the network. So fourth is obviously since you have more options, so the cost of doing business for a seller also goes significantly down, which in turn further increase the profitability for the seller. So I'll say these are, I'll say four biggest benefits. And apart from that, the another big benefit is of the reputation ledger. Unlike other platforms here, basically in this, on this particular network, currently, let's say if you are associated or live through a seller app A, you have, if you have built a reputation on the network, maybe in let's say six, seven or X months of time. And tomorrow, if you think that you want to integrate directly through your API, or you want to switch to another seller application B, then you don't need to worry about your particular reputation on the network. Here, since reputation ledger is one important, uh, you know, feature that we do have on the network, so that reputation ledger will take care of the entire reputation or rating reviews, et cetera, which you have built in, let's say, X months of time. So even if a seller switches to another application or if a seller decides to integrate directly on the network, then also the reputation will carry it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, on the network. So that these are, I'll say, four or five big advantages for uh, uh, the seller to come on the ONDC network. Now, if I talk about the buyer side, then, uh, you know, for buyer applications, the first biggest advantage is, as I was giving the example of Paytm, let's say if I am a, a buyer app like Paytm, where I'm normally into the business of digital wallets, where I know there are a lot of end consumers that are coming to my app, right? I can definitely leverage on the buyers that are coming to my buyer app and I can showcase them some something else. I can cross sell or upsell something else, right? And that's what the advantage of uh, for the buyer app is where a buyer app like Paytm that they doesn't need to set up the entire supply from scratch. They can just integrate on ONDC network and they can showcase the supply of different supplier apps, the way let's say Paytm is showcasing right now, where show, Paytm is showcasing 
uh, supply of Magic Pin, which is bringing around 35 plus thousand plus restaurants. They are also showcasing supply of, let's say, UO Engage or Growth Falcon, different seller apps that are bringing around 2000 plus grocery stores. So this is the biggest advantage for buyer app where they can get an entry or they can showcase multiple domains on the buyer uh, on their particular application. Second is obviously a unified experience is something which a buyer applications can provide to all their buyers. Third is in terms of since they can showcase the wider assortment, obviously once you showcase the wider assortment, then you are offering you know, wider options for price and delivery also to the buyers. So that's the, I'll say, third biggest advantage. And fourth is obviously since you know that ONTC is also largely uh, promoting hyper-local commerce, there are definitely buyer applications like PIN code that are largely promoting hyper-local commerce. So here you will find a lot of local Kirana shops that have come online and they are selling the goods. So here, obviously, by integrating on ONTC network, you can expect the faster fulfillment and delivery to happen. So I'll say, you know, in terms of experience also, you can provide an extraordinary experience to your buyers in terms of faster fulfillment and delivery. So I'll say these are a few, uh, you know, uh, benefits that you'll get on the buyer side where any buyer app without making even a single rupee investment on building the supply, they can just integrate it with ONDC and showcase different, you know, supply options or enter into altogether newer categories by just leveraging on the strength of the different uh, supply partners that are there on the sell side. So uh, I'll say these are, I'll say, uh, few benefits uh, to join both as a buyer and seller application. Great, great. That clarifies a lot of things, Manila. Uh, before moving further, I would like to highlight one problem here. Yeah. And that's a really good problem to have. We are having a lot of questions in the chat box. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So we will be moving a bit faster so that we can ad address as many questions as possible. Uh, so based on our experience, talking to brands, talking to sellers. What we have identified is that in order to understand ONDC, what ONDC actually is, we need to also understand what ONDC is not. Yes. So Badri, if you would like to highlight some of the misconceptions around ONDC that are there in the market and that can help our audience to have a better understanding of ONDC. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, sure. So moving quickly, and thank you, Abdullah, for putting an uh, interesting slide uh, on the screen. Um, because it is e-commerce and because we are talking about buying and selling, people often assume that this is a platform. So this is not an application, nor a platform, nor a technology product. Exactly like internet, you can't log into internet. You have to open a browser or you go to a website, you go to a mail client. There is nothing called internet that you can log in. When this is exactly like internet of e-commerce. So it is a protocol. It is a capability. It is a technology infrastructure which has enabled an open network for, for you guys to play as network participants as a seller application, logistics application, or a buyer application. ONDC is, because it is unbundled, it is very fertile for innovation. So every node or every slice of ONDC can have much more innovation in the years to see. It's not a single model. It's infinite model. As I said, Vijay's case, every seller or a seller application can play different models for their business, right? It's not a central intermediary. We at ONDC uh, do not intermediate in any kind of communication, any kind of uh, even repository of values, like we don't keep any data. So we are enabling business to do handshake and in do information exchange. And ONDC eliminates that need for any central intermediary. If you are a seller application or a seller, your catalog through seller application is directly visible on buyer applications for the buyers. And a buyer on their favorite buyer application can have access, direct access to your catalog. ONDC though it is backed by government of India, it's not a regulator. We also respect the law of land and we all know uh, the fundamentals and basics of business of uh, doing business in India. It is actually a market and community-led initiative which is created and governed by all the network participants on different nodes of buying, selling and doing logistics. 
Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks, Badri. Uh, we understand that uh, like currently OEDC is a revolution in making and there are a lot of things that will happen in the coming months or years for that matter. Uh, Manila, our audience and us also would like to understand currently at what scale OEDC stands. What are the categories that are live? What are the domains that are live? If you can highlight that. Sure. So um, if I have to talk about the categories, so currently ONDC uh, beat, so basically broadly, I define that in ONDC, we have started with two domains. One is B2B and another is vertical is B2C. Now, if I talk about B2C, currently we are with live with around nine uh, categories. These nine categories are spread across food and beverage, grocery, home and kitchen, fashion, BPC, and mobility. And similarly, if I talk about B2B, B2B business is something which we have recently launched on 5th of June. And here we have started with grocery and fashion as a um, category. Also, there are a lot of uh, two upcoming domains on ONDC. One is financial product and another is services. Basically, these two particular domains will largely help both B2B as well as B2C buyers and sellers in terms of financing their uh, businesses so that the working capital constraint, which is largely faced by most of the businesses, right? That obstacle is some uh, somewhere solved by ONDCs, this particular domain, which will help the MSMEs and larger uh, all the businesses to scale further. So these are, I'll say, broadly the categories uh, uh, that are live currently on the network. And uh, if I talk about the journey that we have made so far, so happy to share that, uh, that within one year of launch, of ONDC, we currently stand at around 39,000 plus seller base that we do have. So we are currently live with around 45 lakh plus SQs and 39,000 plus sellers. And currently we are live in around 273 cities. So this is the kind of you know selection base and uh, buyer base that we have reached out to. If I talk about OPD, right, which is orders per day. So we are, uh, so we are largely doing around uh, 15,000 orders on daily level basis. And on weekends, uh, we you uh, actually touch orders in the range of 30 to 35,000 orders. So this is in terms of retail. If I talk about mobility domain, which is so largely includes uh, uh, our NPs like in Namayatri, there we are doing around 40 to 50,000 rides on daily level basis. And happy to share this number that today, Today is the milestone where we have crossed half a million rides uh, in uh, you know, mobility domain today. And uh, so that's the kind of achievement and the progress that we have made so far um, you know, uh, in uh, B2C business. And uh, we are hoping that uh, we will see some and uh, similar trend in B2B domain as well. And obviously, since we largely, the business is largely coming from two categories and we have recently launched the other categories like fashion, BPC, home as well. So there is a lot of potential to further, you know, um, explore on ONDC channel. Great. Thanks, Manila. It's great to see like this much of numbers in the initial phases only. So yeah, that's really great. Uh, Akshay, I see that you have been listening to the conversation silently for a very long time now. So I have some questions for you. And uh, yeah, so we talked about a lot of players in the ONDC ecosystem, the logistic partners, seller application, buyer applications, and other stuff. How Bizom is playing its, its part in the ONDC ecosystem, if you would like to highlight that. Happy to do that, uh, Abdullah. First off, thank you for having me here today. I appreciate that. Um, and also great to see that we are averaging one question about every 30 seconds, uh, which is always good, uh, great engagement. Um, so, uh, it always made sense for Bizom, uh, to get into this partnership, uh, I think we just lost start of this audio, uh, actually I'm we just so lost sorry. it for a bit. Sorry. It's fine. No, it's fine. You can yeah. We can hear you. Yeah. Now. yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, no worries. Uh, like I was saying, uh, Bizam has been in the route to market automation space since 2014. 
uh, we partnered with consumer packaged goods companies from the very start of this journey. Uh, we built a very specific vertical play, which is focused just on consumer packaged goods as an industry. Uh, over the course of our operations, uh, we've onboarded over 360 plus brands, uh, which also come with their overall network or ecosystem of downstream supply chain players, right? So uh, some numbers up on the slide here, but what fundamentally made sense for us and what has clicked is the fact that in order to build a sustainable e-commerce business uh, with a high uh, fulfillment velocity, the only way that you build a business uh, which is sustainable is going to be a business that includes uh, small micro retailers in the narrative. I think even from the questions, a lot of what I get is, you know, people sort of play it, is it ONDC versus Amazon? It is none of that, right? It is about fundamentally shifting how e-commerce operates so that we can agree that e-commerce, like any other business, should be a unit economics. Uh, the, the unit economics should fit. It should be a sustainable profit-making business, right? Everybody wants to make profit at the end of the day. Uh, manufacturers, sellers, operators like us, right? And that is what ONDC enables uh, because we believe that last mile is something that retailers do really well. They have been doing it for decades and anything that tries to replace them instead of trying to understand what they bring to the table is not sustainable. We believed in it at Bizam for the longest time. And, you know, so it's our pleasure to be working with ONDC on this. Uh, great. Actually, just to add up there, since like Bizom is working with a lot of brands and what ONDC is trying to do is drive that change in behavior. So when it comes to that change of behavior in brands or maybe sellers at every node, how well do you think the sellers are adapting to it? And is there anything else we as Bizom are doing to drive that change? Sure, Abdullah. See, this webinar is one of those things, arguably. Uh, but to answer your question, see, e-commerce has been around, right? Badri said this already, right? E-commerce is not a new baby to companies or sellers in the industry in India, right? Uh, what's been the challenge so far has been uh, penetration for the very reasons that we've talked about earlier in this session, right? And fundamentally, brands understand that this is a channel like any other, which needs cultivation, which needs development. Uh, right? It's not about us versus them. It's not an us versus them narrative. It is just another channel in a growing array of channels available to any manufacturer or seller to grow their business. Right? And that has been very heartening. We've seen a great, uh, you know, great host of brands coming onto uh, Bizom seller application. We also have Deepak here with us today. Uh, so, you know, it's it's been great. Um, but obviously, we are looking to uh, increase the velocity here. We are looking to add more brands over the coming quarters uh, because we believe that, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about building a solution that serves the micro retailer, uh, the micro seller, right? Which are essentially your last nodes as a manufacturer to the consumer. And we believe there is value in looking at ONDC, like Badri talked about as a, as a bedrock for innovation, right? How can I legitimately solve challenges in a, in a micro seller's life today, because they are not using Amazon, they are not using Dunzo, they are not using, you know, the many applications that are available. So clearly something is being missed, right? How do we solve for it is, is the question and the opportunity today. Yeah. Great. And also would you like to talk about the approach that uh, brands are having in order to sell on ONDC? Like what's the approach? Sure, uh, happy to do that. Uh, see, uh, I again, uh, coming back to the questions that I'm seeing in chat, a lot of people talking about Shopify, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, the good old D2C playbook, we know how it works. Uh, you know, is it going to operate like that? The reality is it is not, right? So you broadly as a brand have three approaches that you can take, four approaches if you come to hybrid, one has a different approach. Uh, but uh, fundamentally, there are three approaches, right? And again, because this is e-commerce, it's a game of availability. Let us all align on that. Uh, fact, right? Uh, there are three broad approaches uh, being hybrid on available to you. You can either do the standard uh, D2C play, which is you know a warehouse-led play for e-commerce. There can be a distributor-led play, which is what typically brands do on marketplaces. And there is a retailer-led play, which is very nascent and very new for any brand or any player in the industry, to be fair. And this is what uh, we believe is something that sets ONDC apart. Uh, depending on the priorities of the brand, uh, either approach is correct. Uh, but when we look at it, we believe that hybrid is the best because, see, fundamentally, it's about delivery experience, right? Everybody is okay with two-day delivery. Uh, 
but nobody is okay with being told that stuff will come to your house at in 10 minutes and then getting it in 30 right so fundamentally early delivery has always been a delight driver for consumers regardless of whether you know it was a two day delivery that came in on one day so we believe hybrid is the right approach uh, so far what we've been advising brands to do uh, is sort of focus or, or decide on a final approach uh, we are happy to sort of walk them through the process of coming on board ONDC. And uh, once we've completed this process, which is a fairly straightforward process, right? Any standard e-com onboarding process, uh, we can help sellers go live on ONDC within seven days. So yeah, that's been the approach so far. Uh, great. Uh, so I think till now we have got the perspective from ONDC, from Badri and Vanilla. We got a perspective from a seller application point of view. Now let's have a perspective from a brand. Let's have a brand's perspective. So we have Deepak from Fackelman with us. Uh, like Fackelman was one of the very first brand we signed on for ONDC. It took a few conversations, but yeah, now here we are. Uh, so uh, Deepak, if you can just help us understand when you were first introduced to ONDC, what were your initial thoughts and uh, what drove that decision to join ONDC for Fackelman for you? Thanks, Abdullah. Thanks for having me here. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my first impression or the initial thought that I had was that this is groundbreaking and truly disruptive. Decision for us at Fackelman was very, very clear that of course we have to be or we must be part of this uh, disruption that is happening for e-commerce uh, as a channel. As a, as a brand, uh, Fackelman is not known to many people. We are a 104 year old German origin um, uh, brand, which are leader in uh, kitchenware, cookware globally. But for in India, people don't know us. And being a new brand and being a new player, uh, the first and uh, very few challenges that any brand faces is that the freight on the streets are low. Being a D2C brand also, the, uh, the availability of your product is very, very low. And we feel that ONDC is something that will help us to reach out, uh, to get that reach, uh, to do that expansion for us, um, maybe enabling our distributors uh, with their entire range. Um, currently, for our category, it is B2C, which is currently live, but soon, once B2B doors open, we like to explore those and expand our business, not only in metro and hyperlocal model, but also across Pan-India. Great. Also, also, would like to understand like how the key stakeholders in the network may be for specifically a brand like you, your retailers, your distributors can leverage this opportunity. Like, what's your thought on it? See, for uh, for a channel or for e-commerce, it is one of the most cost-intensive channel that any brand will uh, realize. And what we expect and what we are, uh, what we see, and uh, ONDC has a potential is to bring the consumer acquisition cost to minimum level, and that is what we are also aiming to achieve with this. Um, we globally have an assortment of 10 million SKUs. And today I cannot even imagine that I am live on Amazon with that those 10 million SKUs. Forget 10 million, I cannot even go live with say 10,000 SKUs with it. And with this ONDC, I have a freedom to understand uh, with those SKUs live, understand what is working for me, what is not working for me, and without being cost intensive to understand, uh, do that learning for me. And that's, that's what any new brand that interoperability uh, feature for it will play a very important role. We can expand our catalog without any extra charge. And I would say the um, the benefit which is in disguise for this or a cherry on a cake is that we have the control of our the first party data. The data that we are getting for all of our customers will be able to activate it. We'll be able to serve them even better. We will be able to uh, reach out to them and provide solutions which they need into their kitchen in uh, day to day life. Um, there was an era where people used to invest a lot into, um, say, uh, bathrooms. Now this is an era where people are investing money in their kitchens. And we want to be part of every kitchen as our ambition. Sure. Great. Uh, we uh, Also, we understand that these are early days of the network and early days being Fackelman on the network. But uh, like, if you're happy to share it, we would like to understand your strategy around ONDC currently like is it like hyper local pan india or maybe like what's the current strategy you are approaching for ONDC? um actually Abdullah, it is both it is disrupting the hyper local model but as well as it has a potential to reach out to almost each and every location or each and every pin code in the india and that's where we want to expand it for our reach without investing so high on manpower we are able to reach with ondc to those uh, towns which are in tier one tier two and so on 
India, if I, if I talk about statistic, India has more than 700 million internet users, but consumers which are shopping online are close to 200 million only. So there is still a huge scope. I was, uh, and I'm, if I give you a real example, I know people who use Paytm and PhonePay to do UPI transaction. Globally, we are the biggest uh, uh, number of transacting countries in the world. We do around 46 billion transactions digitally as compared to China, which is 18 billion. We do more than 3x transaction. And we, even with so many transactions, the commerce penetration is very, very low. And with phone pay um, via pin code and Paytm being part of ONDC network, we expect um, and we hope to reach out to those customers which are using digital as a medium, but not using it as for, for us because they are not part of the ecosystem of Amazon or Flipkart of the world. And this is where um, uh, it, it fits right for our TG over there. Okay, that's great. Uh, so yeah, it was great to have all of your perspectives on ONDC. Currently, uh, the good problem that we talked about, we have a lot of questions and uh, now we'll be taking that up. So our team has consolidated some of the questions and uh, so we'll be going through that one by one. So first, the very simple question, uh, maybe Akshay, you can answer that. Uh, how can we onboard on ONDC? What is the process? So it's a simple process, uh, which can be expedited by having something come up on your screen right now, thanks to Vishruta. Vishruta, if you could move to that slide. Uh, it's a simple process. Uh, there are two QR codes here. Uh, you can scan the one on the left to learn more about ONDC on their website. Uh, I saw a lot of questions around, you know, a list of buyer apps, seller apps, uh, market share live in, et cetera. All of that uh, will be found on ONDC's website. Uh, on the right, uh, you have a QR code that will take you to an, uh, uh, form which will help you express your intent to go or work on ONDC and uh, we'll be happy to reach out to you and take this forward. And however, uh, Akshay and um, yeah. uh, Abdullah, uh, yeah. I think apart from this question, there are 11 more questions which are already answered by Manila and me. Yeah. So we, yeah, can yeah, yeah. To, we can move to other questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. answered. Uh, the next question, maybe uh, Badri, can you you can take it up. So the question is, how does a seller app in a regulated market like pharma, agri, chemicals use the ONDC network? It's a very interesting question. So regulated market doesn't allow very conveniently to do e-commerce with this uh, range of products. Uh, I would say we are still exploring. So pharma is one of the focus categories for ONDC where uh, we started with over um, OTP pro OTC products and we are exploring it with the departments, both for pharma and agri, uh, to open it on ONDC. I think let's wait for a month, another month, and we'll come back with a solution. Uh, great. Uh, so next question, maybe Manila, you can take it up. So the question is how ONDC will make a difference, difference for the fintechs, especially the regulated ones. What's in it for them? Okay. Uh, so for uh, fintech company, uh, so okay. So I think to get on board on ONDC, uh, uh, first of all, any entity that is, entity needs to decide whether they want to come on the sell side, buy side, or logistic side. So let's say if I talk from fintech standpoint, so uh, we are in discussion with a lot of fintech companies where one is, as I mentioned, that financial services is one of the domain that we are very soon launching on ONDC network. So definitely it's a great opportunity for fintech companies to come and launch or be, uh, be a seller uh, on one uh, the financial services domain that we are launching. With this, obviously fintech companies will get a, an access to the larger buyer as well as seller, as well as MSME universe, and uh, they will get a chance to expand their buyer base, that's one. Second, obviously, the other way with, uh, you know, uh, where fintech, the other option that fintech, most of the fintech companies they are exploring is in terms of enabling the e-commerce. So there are a lot of fintech companies, they are reaching out and saying that since they already um, are connected to large number of distributors and uh, uh, retailers, where they are themselves, uh, you know, financing that part in terms of invoice discounting and bill discounting, right? So uh, they are basically thinking of enabling or opening up a, an e-commerce function uh, via which they can start, uh, you know, catering the regular products also to these particular retailer or I'll say the distributors they are largely catering to, right? 
So I'll say these are the two options uh, that are there possible on ONDC network for fintech companies. The third option, which is also possible for fintech companies to also come as a buyer application, where uh, there are lot, a large number of fintech companies uh, that have a huge buyer base that mm -hmm. is already coming onto their website or application, right? So definitely uh, they can uh, think of, you know, getting into some other domain, which is very complementary to their existing business and start cross-selling that particular business or that particular domain to their existing buyer. So these are, I'll say, three options uh, that are currently uh, most of the fintech companies they are exploring with the NDC net. Great. Uh, there's one more like interesting question. Maybe Deepak can answer that because Deepak has already experienced it. So the question is, is there any additional charge that we have to pay to be available on a certain buyer application? So Deepak, did you pay any charge, additional charge? Uh, no, there is no additional charge that we uh, pay to be part of any buyer application. Uh, Okay, uh, so we have an interesting question. Uh, so sorry, I'll uh, just answer that. So currently, uh, so ONDC is a non-profit organization. So we don't charge any uh, thing. Uh, it's a, a non-profit organization. So we charge a 0% commission. So now let's say if you are coming as a seller, definitely there is a buyer finder fee, which is usually charged by the buyer apps to the seller apps. So that's one charge that you need to pay. And in case if you are registering as a seller on one of the seller application, then basically you need to pay the summation of buyer finder fee and the seller app fee. So these are the two charges that you need to pay for in case if you are thinking of coming on the sell side. Great. Uh, so we have an interesting question. Uh, so Badri, if you can have your perspective on it. Uh, so the question is, what about if brand if any brand wants to build their own mobile app instead of being discoverable on paytm pin code or any other buyer application so no, we understand that this will affect the discoverability currently but once they develop a good branding uh they'll be able to land customers there also how about that so everyone is welcome to play a role of their choice however if so being a creating a buyer application uh, is not the end goal, right? Acquiring and maintaining the customers for a profitable growth is the goal. Now, if you are deep pocket, if you have funding guarantees, and definitely this is a way forward. Uh, as we know that only 5 to 6% transactions are happening in India online. So there is a 95% of market who is waiting for you. Uh, and ONDC welcomes you if you want to become a buyer application for a consistently large supply side already which is ready to be to be accessible by you for your customers great uh, once again a similar question uh, not a similar exactly but yeah it's an interesting one uh, so the question is uh, manila maybe you can take this up uh, so the question is as we all know when something start there are a lot of lucrative values offers that are there in the market but once it reaches the scale, it becomes expensive. How does ONDC is ensuring that the value that ONDC is providing currently, it will be maintained all throughout when, when it scales? Sure. So um, I think uh, as, uh, so as we all know that in, uh, as we talked about in our presentation, that in the current ecosystem, e-commerce ecosystem, largely the market is monopolistic in nature, right? Where once the number of transactions or business grows, right? An entity, um, you know, has a full charge or uh, they can, uh, you know, operate their terms and condition and they can ask the seller that this is the commission you need to pay, right? But the overall objective with which ONDC has uh, started uh, is uh, definitely where we are saying that we will enable so many options for a seller or a buyer to uh, you know go online that uh, even after some time if a seller grows to a certain level let's say if today i am a seller or a brand i reach to almost 1 cr or 2 cr of transactions on monthly basis it won't happen uh, unlike other platforms where a plat uh, a seller app will come back to me and say okay now since i have increased your business to 2 cr this is the kind of commission i'm going to charge so that won't happen why because obviously I know that seller application is a medium through which I am going live on the network. I don't need to worry about my rep, uh, reputation. 
obviously reputation ledger is something which we, which is already taken care by ondc in case if seller application is coming back and saying that i'm going to increase the commission i can quickly switch to the some other application or maybe i can uh, you know um, get integrated directly also onto the network and uh, make sure that my, the value proposition that i am offering to the buyer it's consistent so to answer your question uh, how ondc will make sure that value proposition is consistent even after some time also the way we will make sure this is by enabling so many options for a seller to be online and display its pricing that a seller can decide that this if this particular application is uh, you know, uh, not okay for me in terms of the commissions or anything that it is charging to me and due to which I'm not able to offer a consistent CVP to my buyer, obviously a seller can decide to integrate directly or can come through a different seller application without even worrying that my ratings and reviews will uh, get changed, right? It will be carried to the other seller application as well. So this is how I'll say ONDC will make sure the uh, value proposition is consistent. Second, on the buy side also, obviously as a buyer, you are showcasing supply of the different seller applications. So let's say if tomorrow as a buyer application, I feel that seller application A has not been consistent in terms of the value proposition, in terms of pricing, fulfillment, etc. I can choose to not do business with that seller application. I might choose that I will do business only with seller application B, C, D, and E. So that is also another I'll say, uh, you know, a check that we have put in place with the help of which obviously buyer applications will also make sure that they are also offering consistent, you know, um, uh, value proposition to the buyer. So the idea is to enable so many options on buy and sell side that uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, there are uh, there is no chance of any kind of leakage that happens as of now, because obviously the market is monopolistic in nature as of now. Great. Uh, so we have one more, not a question, it's a request, like it goes to the ONDC team. So someone from the audience want a awareness workshop in Nasik. So Badri and Manila, if you can just take this up and. Sure, sure. Oh, My yes. request would be please write to team at the rate ONDC.org and we'll definitely take it up. Sure. Uh, the next question, maybe Akshay, you can take this up uh, since you are dealing with brands and sellers. So how will the accountability of fulfilling the order be checked? What if the order is not fulfilled or fulfilled, but in a unsatisfactory manner? How, how are we doing it? How are we solving it? Sure. Uh, like any other e-commerce cha channel, you can raise a complaint, right? Uh, again, nothing changes for the consumer, right? Uh, they get the standard experience that they've come to expect uh, from any e-commerce operation, uh, right? So, uh, at any point in time, they can raise a complaint through the buyer application that they've bought uh, the goods through. Uh, they can obviously also refuse to take delivery of the product if they receive it in a state that doesn't, uh, yeah, uh, that doesn't, uh, thanks for that. Uh, apologies, yeah. Uh, they can choose to return the product if they want to refuse delivery uh, because the product is damaged during transit, etc. right? All of that can be done, is being done, uh, uh, for by consumers on ONDC today as well. Uh, I actually recently talked to one of those consumers. He placed an order, uh, got the order a little too late, and then had to return it. And uh, my understanding is that for him it was seamless, right? Uh, a lot of the time we make this assumption that you know it's you know three different parties talking. Uh, you know it it won't be simpler. But what you need to understand is every single transaction in itself is a contract, a legally binding contract that all parties are entering into, right? So there is clear culpability, there is clear responsibility uh, as to what party is responsible for which part of the overall transaction. And, you know, uh, that is very clear. So uh, the network itself is responsible for making sure that any consumer issues are dealt with in a satisfactory manner. I think that's the thing to realize here, if you want to take away one thing today, is that understand that I think we are far too used to guarantors. Uh, this is not, uh, you know, the, the, the network itself or the participants themselves are responsible for making sure that the transaction happens successfully and to the consumer's, uh, you know, to the consumer's standards, meets the consumer's standards. Wait, just to add up one thing here. So recently only I was having this conversation 
with someone from the team and they mentioned that uh, what ond is we can draw an analogy here so when we go to an airport in airport we see a lot of services operating we have security services we have different airlines we have logistics and everything and it or it all operates very seamlessly similarly this will also happen in the ondc network as well we have different services operating here but it will, will always happen very seamlessly so yeah that's the thing about it uh one more interesting question uh deepak you can directly answer it from a brand's perspective i think it would be interesting to know it from you so there is an interesting question that uh, considering the deep pockets of big e-commerce companies i'll not name it how will the sellers uh, listed on ondc be able to compete with the big sellers that are there on those marketplaces or is it is it really about the competition uh, said so there are two aspects to it i will first answer the aspect of how uh, a small company or a new company can compete to uh, these platforms uh, the the one of the best feature that i liked about ondc is that uh, because the margins for the platform be it on a buyer side or a seller side are very low uh, brands have a freedom and brands have a flexibility to uh, price their product better and more lucrative to the consumers and that's how uh, gives you a, a edge to the win versus other players so that is the first angle to it uh, another angle to it is that with with that visibility you can also understand which are the products suiting their Price point and consumers which are looking into it, you can provide those solutions, which doesn't restrict you from a listing a new product. Because, for example, if I'm listed on Amazon, if I want to increase new assortment, I have to again go from the same process of uh, listing over there, first aligning with them, listing those products, and so on. With ONDC, that is easy and uh, free for me. So I can try, test, experiment, learn, fail, and then again evolve. The, these two things help me to be uh, successful as a new brand. Great. Yeah. Uh, so there's one more, again, a lot of interesting questions. Her question, I'm saying it's an interesting one, but honestly, all are interesting. So the next is like, how are buyer apps choosing the seller, sellers across multiple seller apps? Are they really choosing it? So Padri. Hey, no. Uh, I think uh, here, the buyer app uh, buyer, app no, buyer app is not left with any choice to choose. It's a very democratic environment. So through any seller application, you showcase your catalog. It is available on all buyer applications. Buyer app has a choice to show you your product in a, in a manner which they understand is relevant for their set of customers. So stay assured that your product is visible on all buyer application. And because you are not limited to a particular buyer application, it's not about competition anymore. Your, the customer can discover you in any other application. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great. Uh, so we have one more question. Uh, so it's from a seller's perspective that I have a huge catalog. I listed through one of the seller application, but due to some reasons, now I move to, I want to move to a different seller application. How difficult this process would be for me? So maybe Akshay, you have a seller application. Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, I, I said that. Uh, okay. Uh, it's fairly easy uh, to be fair because uh, that's the beauty about ONDC, right? The standards are the same. So uh, regardless of whether or not you work with seller app A or B or C or D, uh, the information that they need would be the same. Uh, so to answer your question, please write to me at akshay.futhidar at the rate mobisi.com and I'd be happy to help uh, walk you through the process. Uh, great. So yeah, I hope everyone noted down the mail ID. Uh, so someone wanted one use case in, in the agriculture domain. Uh, so maybe Manila, if you can answer that. Sorry, the question is, the question one is example uh, if, you can, if you can discuss any one use case in the agriculture domain for ONDC. Okay. So in agricultural domain, I think, uh, one of the biggest use cases, uh, especially uh, with the help of ONDC network, currently, let's say there are a lot of FPOs, you know, farmer produce organizations where uh, they don't get the fair price of the, the, you know, commodities they are trying to sell. So definitely by getting themselves listed on ONDC network as a seller, right, definitely they will get a chance to expose the supply 
or showcase their supply to the larger buyer universe that is there on the buy side. And uh, in turn, it will help them in, in uh, you know, increasing the profits, increasing the margins for them where they can, you know, uh, uh, in, uh, remove the mediaries, intermediaries that are there and the directly get connected to the buyer. And, uh, uh, and let's say if the product quality is good, they can charge uh, premium for that. So definitely uh, in terms of agri, uh, in agri domain, definitely FPOs will get a chance to uh, larger buyer base. That can be one use case. There can be use cases where, uh, you know, there is a, uh, in agri, especially obviously as if I talk about uh, agri in India, there are specific supply clusters. For example, for onion, uh, Maharashtra, Kolapur, Nasik Belt is majorly the supply cluster. Or similarly, for let's say potato, Agra is the major supply cluster. So here, as we know that uh, potato travels from Agra to uh, the entire uh, part of the country, right? So, uh, and obviously the moment, like let's say the supplier is way, uh, you know, far uh, or distant from the buyer, there are a lot of intermediaries. So here, obviously through NDC, uh, uh, potato, uh, a farmer who is actually into potato business, or let's say if there is a big wholesaler who is based out of Agra and can offer fair prices, right, for uh, commodities like potato. So uh, they will definitely get a chance to discover a lot of buyers who can come from the different states on ONDC network uh, with the help of different buyer applications. So I will say these are two large use cases. And then there are definitely a lot of, you know, B2B use cases as well that are there in the agri domain. Great. Uh, so in the interest of time, we'll just take one more question. Um, and after the session, we can also get connected with each other. But one last question. Uh, so the question is, I am a brand. I listed my products on the ONDC network. What is also happening is that our neighborhood Kirana store are also listing on the ONDC network. Now, how do I ensure a constant catalog, a uniformity in the catalog? I'll upload a different catalog. He must be uploading his products from a different catalog. Like how, how are we ensuring the uniformity in the catalog? We are the, you can take this. One. Very valid question. And it is a matter of concern for all the brands. Though the product, wherever it sells, it doesn't matter to them. But credibility of brand is that uh, is, is a question. So ONDC is enabling a a service called catalog as a service where we are creating a common repository where the seller or seller application just free of cost it's complementary to all at a click of a button can actually download and go live with with the catalog for example uh parleji many all the all the kirana stores in india sell parleji right parle definitely would like to have to retain the right photography, the imagery, and the content of the product. So if Parleji content is available with the right imagery, the seller or seller application, what they need to do, they go to ONDC catalog as a service repository, search Parleji. So it is a tool we are going to launch like a web tool, search Parleji, see all Parleji variants, whatever Parleji variant that you are selling, click that and you can download and ingest that catalog with the richness that brand has created. So we request every brand who has a pan-India play or a larger play of geography should and must contribute to ONDC's initiative of catalog as a service. Great. Well, thank you so much, Madhuri. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. there is one question that is, uh, I think, consistently being asked by some anonymous attendee. That as per the discussion, does ONDC be focusing into the MSME sellers? So. Uh, so yeah, answer is yes. So I think uh, as uh, uh, we mentioned, ONDC got conceptualized with the aim to digitize and digitize part of India. So definitely we are aggressively working to digitize the MSME sellers. In fact, if I talk about the B2C domain, there we have a separate uh, social sector domain, uh, which is largely working with all the uh, you know uh, government organizations like SIGBI, MSME ministry, and also with a lot of um, organizations like Okai, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, where they are, uh, you know, in process of onboarding a lot of artisans who are not getting visibility or they don't have a direct access to the market. So that's on the B2C side, right? 
and if i talk about uh, b2b side on b2b side also we are again working with sidbi msme ministry as well as with uh, csc right store of government where uh, we are uh, uh, we have very soon we are going to launch a program which will help in digitizing 90 to 100 million msmes that are there in india so uh, definitely this is one of the biggest objective i'll say uh of ondc and uh, we are working towards it and when i say msme it's not only i'm not only talking about the manufacturers i'm also talking about all the kirana nearby kirana shops that are currently undigitized right great uh, great manila great to hear that so yeah uh, we have come to the end of our webinar uh, one thing i would like to mention here is that we are already over time but still i see around 150 people in the webinar says a lot around the buzz says a lot about the buzz around ondc these days so yeah uh, so two three things i would like to highlight here uh, so all our attendees you will be receiving an ebook around ondc uh, based on our discussions with the ondc team based on our discussions today you'll be receiving an ebook for you to go through our team will get in touch with you if there are any further queries or you can get in touch with us if there are any further queries or concerns that you have around ONDC. It's an open network. Everyone can talk to everyone. And uh, yeah, with this video also, this uh, webinar video also, you'll be getting it on email. Uh, and yeah, that was all about today. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining and staying along. Thank you so much, all the speakers, for taking out time on a Tuesday afternoon. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All the best to everyone. Thank you, everybody. Great day so much. Bye-bye.